The Latin name Mithras, associated with the Roman mystery religion of Mithraism, takes its name from the Hindu Vedic and Indo-Aryan god Mitra. Now Mithra was the Iranian or Persian god of light, whose name means that which causes binding. Now Mitra, the Hindu and Indo-Aryan god, was a member of the Ahuras, linked to the Ashuras of Indic religions, who are linked also with the Devas. These Ahuras, or Ashuras, are akin to Georgiani to the Greek Titans, similar to Atlas and Prometheus, seen as liberators. Now like Zeus, Indra is the enemy of the liberating Ashuras, siding to and with the Devas. So in Zoroastrianism, however, there's a split between the Ahuras and Devas. In Hinduism, they're kind of seen as synonymous, but in Zoroastrian, there's a split, where the Devas are seen as liars or deceivers, leading to chaos and disorder. We can see the link thus between the Devas and Yahweh, or Zeus, as the false gods, where Ahura, the true liberating god, is linked with Ahura Mazda, the lord of wisdom, as well as Mithra, right, the Iranian or Persian god of light, who was inspiration again from the Roman Mithraic mysteries of Mithraism. The Ahuras are seen possessing a sense of Asha, or truth about them, while the Devas are perceived as possessing a sense of Drug, meaning deception. In Zoroastrianism, Angramenu, or Araman, is the destructive spirit and enemy of both Spentamenu, who is the creative spirit, and Ahura Mazda himself, who is the highest creator deity. But to Georgiani, this is somewhat oversimplified. Araman, or Angramenu, is merely the entropic nature of chaos, or cosmic disorder. Similarly, Ahura Mazda is not akin to an omnipotent Judeo-Christian god, since that would rob man of his existential freedom, seen more in terms of a cosmic intelligence, but not omniscient or omnipotent, which would again destroy free will. Thus, Giorgiani's problem with, of course, traditionalist or perennialist schools of thought and people who believe in eternal cosmic orders of timeless perfection. Araman similarly prevents a pre-established cosmic order from occurring, where nothing is yet perfect, but merely in the process of being perfected. Chaos thus offsets eternal or divine order from being established. Thus, there is need for a demonic revolt, which will lead to evolutionary improvement. In a sense, chaos and order operate somewhat in a Hegelian dialectic in a way, very Gnostic, and play off one another to move us down the road of Hegel's history in an attempt to overcome entropy if we can. Obviously, to deconstruct this concept, we would use Kant's transcendent noumena over Hegel's imminent synthesis, as well as Land's thermodynamic zero of deterritorialized entropic disintegration. In other words, there is no overcoming entropy, and there is no Hegelian dialectic that can be established with the outside. In Zoroastrianism, Asha is also linked to Asha Vahista, meaning the best truth and cosmic order opposed to chaos or disorder, and is linked to utopias or paradises. Like Heraclitus to Georgiani, Zoroaster represents the cosmic order through fire, which is beyond dualities and is illuminating. We can also see the link between this fire with Prometheus. To Georgiani, spentamenu means progressive mentality, thus the connection to evolution and progress towards the Gnostic-like path to utopia or paradise. To Giorgiani, it was the Greco-Roman contact with these Mithraic mysteries that led them to acknowledge one could only become a true human being by cultivating their mind, and thus the rise of the humanities. It's still important, however, to Giorgiani that we side with Ahura Mazda over Araman, though both are needed on the path to perfection. Unlike accelerationist thought, which is not a call to action of any kind, since AI cannot be controlled, Giorgiani does call for us to set our conscious and actions accordingly, and does not advocate for the nihilistic sentiments associated with accelerationism itself. In Zoroastrianism, there is a progressive mentality associated with the end of history, similar to Christian eschatology, leading to a rebirth of the world, where one emerges from the fires akin to an alchemical phoenix, and where those who travel down the wrong path are purged as the righteous only emerge to inherit the new utopian planet. 
We could see the link between this and the birth of a new type of Superman in the Nietzschean sense, thus Nietzsche's link to Zarathustra, and the transhuman or Promethean man. And thus, like Plato's Atlantis to Giorgiani, there will be a battle between opposing sides. Old gods versus titans, Asuras versus devas, Ahura Mazda versus Araman, etc., where man and gods are destroyed in an apocalyptic war, a twilight of the idols. Or perhaps oppositely, in accelerationist thought, there will be no battle. We will simply become our alien counterpart, where our enemy infects us and turns us into it, so that we can't even tell who or what enemies even are anymore. Before Zoroastrianism, however, were the nomadic Scythians, who were considered a more archaic or pre-Zoroastrian religion, and who would also use drugs to engage in trance states and drink from the skulls of their enemies. Scythians also did not have a written language. The name Scythian was used later in Roman and Greek literature to describe nomadic barbarians of all kinds, though they were not actually related to Scythians themselves. To Georgiani, Zoroaster may have been killed, in fact, by said Scythians. Needless to say, much of Scythian life mirrors the accelerationist attitude. Nomadic, barbarian, no written language, shamanic trance states, etc. If Zoroastrianism is to be deconstructed, I would say it is through the Scythians. Nomadic, of course, in terms of Delusian lines of flight to the outside, barbarian, in the way Culp in Dark Deleuze and the Grupo de Nun advocate for the concept. No written language, obviously in terms of nomos, overtaking logos in the accelerationist sense, and shamanic trance states, akin to Bataille and Rimbaud's impossible. Ahura Mazda could also be opposed, as we said with Araman, as Araman, Ormuz, is used by land, A-O, right, Araman Ormuz, is used by land to convey the concept of Aosis itself, favoring chaos and entropy over any established sense of order. And unlike Georgiani, there is no Hegelian dialectic between opposites, since AI forever rests outside our experience as noumenon, outside of our control, and any sense of understanding. Free will is thus lost in such a deterministic material world, which is the exact opposite of what Georgiani advocates. Like the Scythians, Epimetheus thus drinks from Zarathustra's skull. Wisdom, after all to land, signifies an end to all of our adventures. If the Devas act as the Gnostic Archons who punish us like lost Atlanteans, then maybe the wisdom of the Gothas doesn't serve as a better form of escape when compared to a Gothic form of nomadic flight. Even if we succumb to Sophia's imminent wisdom, the Pleroma cannot know or greet the incomprehensible Godhead, which exists on the outside, transcendentally beyond any sense of understanding.